SMT Nation, we back with another video. In this one, we're going to take a look at an upgrade. I actually did a video on this. I had some footage. I did a live recording, and then I just did voiceover. Uh, but I actually have some pictures, and I want to do a little bit of detail, show you guys what's going on, and then I'm just going to kind of investigate and observe what they're doing up there. The crew wasn't there when I showed up, so I couldn't ask any questions. Quite often, they're very nice and kind, and they take a moment to explain what they're doing, uh, what is happening in terms of the modification. But they weren't there. Uh, and they weren't there the day before there were no, there was no modification done. So they were pretty much in the middle of doing this and, um, they made some serious progress because this was maybe around noon and the upgrade hadn't started the day before. So th whenever they started in the morning up until about noon, they had made a pretty, uh, pretty good progress. Uh, let me show you guys why this is an important site. This site is actually the serving cell for Cleveland Hopkins International Airport. The one sector faces the Glenn Research Center, and the that would just be, what would that be, west uh, of the airport? And then going a little east where the airport is, you've got a sector facing that side, uh, kind of like the cargo and then the, um, you know, like where you would have like drop-offs and pickups and baggage claim and all that. That sector is facing you know, uh, the next one over the next sector. And then the sector going behind is actually facing the interstate. All right. So this is the site itself. This is the one facing the airport. This sector faces Glenn Research Center. And then this back sector is facing the interstate back there. All right. Verizon at the top, no upgrade in sight. Uh, but I have kind of began to kind of inquire and check to see if maybe there's something planned in the near term for Verizon as the serving cell uh, for C-band. We'll, we'll see what happens. But we already got C-band gear up here. I'm going to explain and show you guys some detail in the pictures. All right, so Verizon at the top, AT&T below. This is a very short site. It's got to be a uh, flight path of airplanes. Obviously, it can't be freaking 100 feet tall. All right, so um, I'd say it's probably maybe 10 or 15 meters tall. Uh, I mean, even the Verizon portion of it is not very tall. All right, so maybe 30 feet, maybe. All right, very, very short. And because of that, I was able to get some really cool pictures. I'm going to show you guys. And, and this is a mess. You guys can tell the power lines, the cables. All that. All right. at and shelter to the left. Verizon's shelter to the right. There's Verizon's diesel generators. I'm sure at and has batteries inside that uh, that shelter there. All right. So you guys will see at and You got the um, old like singular colors. You guys remember those days? All right. There's their um, air conditioning units, their HVAC stuff. There's diesel generator, Generac for Verizon. And then here's the actual location. So you'll see it says... Site name, NASA, Ohio. This is actually managed by American Tower. Those are the two big companies here in Ohio that I see. If it's not owned by the carrier, which in some cases Verizon does, as well as AT&T, they own their own sites. But if not, it's usually Crown Castle or American Tower. The ones off the interstate are typically American Tower. The ones that are internal, like city streets and you know behind like uh, residential areas and business areas, those are quite often Crown Castle. And, and even the... The millimeter wave nodes, some of them are Crown Castle and stuff like that in the small cells. So anyways, the background here, uh, here are kind of like the four elements of this tower site. You've got the higher frequency uh, mid-band 5G stuff that's going up now, the DOD and the C-band. Here's the C-band at the bottom. Here's the DOD at the top. And then right next to it, there's a mid-band antenna. And there's another mid-band antenna here, and I'll explain why I believe this to be the case. I couldn't really see the radio as well. In fact, I think one of the radios was down, so I couldn't tell. And then here's the low band stuff. Uh, and there's quite often you'll see like a, a tri-band radio, uh, which does like the three types of 700 megahertz that AT&T has. So it'll be like the band 12, the band 29, and the band 14, which, you know, like first net. So I'm um, just kind of throwing that out there as an aside, uh, the radio gear. Um, here's kind of an up close and closer look of the low band and then here's a mid band antenna and another mid band antenna and i'm not sure what exactly they're doing guys and gals and that's kind of what i was alluding to as i wish the crew was there i could ask some questions here's a closer look at all the gear dod c band oops uh da -da, what i accidentally clicked on that uh and then these two i'm actually going to look at with you guys and and here's some antenna stuff back here all right, so this is the best picture I could get. The print is so freaking small, so I can't really see the frequencies that this antenna is compatible with. 
usually I can if I can get a good enough picture, but this the print was just so damn small. I couldn't really see. Here's a pretty good look. And this one's got a range. This one goes from like one, it says like 1700 to 2300. Now, the thing about this type of antenna, 1700 is AWS Band 66. It goes up to 2100 um, as well for AWS. 1.9 gigahertz or 1900 would be PCS. So this could be an antenna that does both AWS and PCS. And actually, it goes upwards into 2300, which would be WCS Band 30. It's very possible that this single antenna is going to be for all three of those bands. Uh, it would just, it would probably require, I think, two radios. You would need a dedicated WCS radio for the um, the twenty three hundred, and then you would need the, I think it's an integrated radio for uh, both the PCS and the AWS. All right, this other one, like I said, I'm not really sure what's coming out, what's going in. I think this may be going out. And that's what the other one is for. I, I don't know. I wish they were there and I could have asked them. Uh, here's another view at that same one that I was, you know, questioning. Uh, if anybody out there has seen these same antennas and you've seen what crews have done with them, let me know. Comment down below. Yeah, here I, I'm not really able to see this. The only thing I could think of is this is the this is a new installation. This is the new stuff that's going in and it's all the tri-band stuff. Uh, for the low band that that's what i was thinking for this one and that's why you see like the all these different inputs here for these cables and here is the c-band antenna it's an integrated antenna radio combo all right so you'll see it's all plugged in uh they'll they're probably going to get this thing live here pretty soon the installations look like they're happening pretty fast this is the 3.7 gigahertz c-band one this is from nokia the manufacturer of this particular antenna radio uh, let's see what else I can get you guys here. Here's another view from the bottom. You got your power. You got your fiber. Um, it's pretty basic. It's kind of nice. These things aren't really that heavy from what I understand. Uh, they're pretty light. I mean, for an integrated antenna and radio. It's kind of convenient. Uh, here it is from another angle if you guys want to look at it. All the different ports that they have to connect different parts of the hardware. Here's the 3.7, uh, 3.4 gigahertz. Uh, DOD, uh, right above it. This is how you're always going to see it. You're always going to see at the bottom, the C-band 3.7, and then at the top, the 3.45 DOD. Um, when the, if, there, if we're going to start seeing integrated gear, that would be cool. Uh, I'll definitely report that back. Uh, but I was able to get close enough and confirm the actual like Nokia branding on these things. All right, that's how close I was because this, the site, guys, is so short. I don't. Did I get a good shot of that? I think I, I did. If not, I'm going to probably put it. Yeah, yeah, it is there. Uh, you guys will see it does indeed say Nokia. That's when you know you got a good camera is, is when you can get that detail. It's not the easiest thing to do. You either got to get really close or you got to have a really, really good telephoto and zoom. All right. And the Pixel does pretty nice. I think the only phone that I probably could use that would be better might be the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra possibly. All right, guys, what do you think of that upgrade? What do you think of the the situation? What do you think of the location? It's interesting, right? All those details in there. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope you learned something. And be on the lookout for upgrades coming to your town. AT&T is on the move. I, I'm not even exaggerating. Every day I find multiple sites getting upgraded. I would not be surprised if in Cuyahoga County, AT&T has like 15 tower crews working simultaneously. And they go from one site to the next. Boom, boom, boom. And they spend a few days and they're gone and the upgrades are very rapid. And because AT&T's upgraded some sites recently, because of FirstNet and such over the last few years, some of these sites, they're just adding C-band and leaving. All right? And some of them do need to be cleaned up and some of them do need some upgrades and they're getting some integrated radio stuff with AWS and PCS and all that. And some are adding band 29 and stuff. So like some of that's happening and that might take a site, in, you know, four or five days, but they're, they're moving pretty quick. It's pretty phenomenal. I can't wait to test this site. And um, we'll see how well it performs. AT&T, they usually do pretty good fiber backhaul. It should be great. should be blazing. We'll see. Um, and, and we're hoping for a Verizon upgrade soon. T-Mobile's already upgraded. They're like 1,000 feet away. So they're good to go. Uh, sound off in the comment section below. Any comments or questions, you are the voice of the people of the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. Like, share, subscribe for more. Turn on that bell notification icon to never miss an upload. Links in the description for my Twitter. 
as well as my Patreon page link if you want to support us and get early access to content and exclusive videos and podcasts not found anywhere else. And my Gmail address is in the description box for all business inquiries. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Peace.